We'll call our February 20 or February 1st meeting of the Cookville City Council to work. We have a roll call, please. Councilman Woodford. Present. Councilman Henry. Mayor Shelton. Here. Vice Mayor Epps. Councilman Womack. Here. Three present, two absent. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite those that wish to do so to stand for the invocation given tonight by Chris McMichael, pastor of Engrafted Word Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for our city and for the city council. We pray your wisdom, your counsel, and your understanding upon the men and women that lead and direct our city. We thank you that they make decisions according to the word of God and the wisdom of God. We thank you, Father, that righteousness will promote and preserve our city. Thank you for this meeting tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item three, consider approval of agenda as presented. Are there any changes or corrections? Mayor, we have no changes to the agenda. Very good, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second, any discussion? All vote. Three yes votes, motion. Under old business, 5A, consider approval of minutes of council meeting held on January 18th, 2018. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second, any discussion? All vote. Three yes votes, motion carries. On the consent agenda, 6A, set a date, 3118 for a public hearing on ordinance O. 180202 rezoning 540 Neal Street tax map 66k um, dash a portion of parcel 17 from CR regional commercial to CG general commercial uh, motion on the consent agenda so moved second motion second any discussion all vote three yes votes motion carries thank you under new business 7a consider approval of license agreement with TDOT for the East Spring Street sidewalk project project Mike Davidson Mayor and council members, uh, as you know, we received a, uh, a little over a million dollar grant from the Tennessee Department of Transportation to construct sidewalks along uh, a portion of East Spring Street from the uh, easiest way to, to describe it is the East Bro uh, Triangle all the way to Old Kentucky Road and then sidewalks uh, along Carlin Drive and Raider Drive going toward uh, Avery Trace. Uh, as part of the construction, acquiring right away to uh, locate the sidewalks, TDOT's uh, asking us to sign this license agreement. It allows us to use TDOT right away in, in, for most of these sidewalks. Uh, there's no cost to the city to uh, use the TDOT right away. It's a 20-year agreement. And uh, just in, in terms of the grant itself, there is a 5% match on top of that grant. But I would ask for your approval to be able to sign this license agreement. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Three yes votes, motion carries. 7B, consider authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for water and wastewater rates and financial planning study. Ronnie Kelly. Mayor and Council, I'm seeking council authorization uh, for the city manager to enter into a contract with Raftelis Financial Consulting Group. Uh, Raftelis will, pre will perform a water and wastewater rate structure review for our department and update our current rate and financial planning model. We worked with the uh, Raptelis group back in 2009 when we developed our current model that we're using. Uh, they will evaluate our current financial uh, state of our department, specifically focusing on our financial position. They'll review our existing rates and structures, develop and recommend a rate structure that meets our funding needs, perform a wholesale rate analysis, explore options to shift additional costs to the fixed charge, and prepare a final report and pre present these findings to the city council. Uh, they're, they're helping, they will help guide our department through the development of a rate structure and financial plan that will ensure that our department has the available funding in place to keep pace with the water and, infra water and wastewater infrastructure needs of the city of Cookville. We've negotiated a price of 44575 and would recommend approval. Uh, I'll show you one thing that's happening. This is our water sold history. I don't know. I, I think it goes back to 2000, but you can see we're declining over time. Uh, this year we've had a pretty good uh, decline. Most of that was attributed to a utility district sort of getting their leaks under control. But that hit right there is about a $300,000 hit. But as you can see, not taking that out of the equation, we've still been declining over time. So. Uh, our rate structure in the water department is we have a very economical rate, very cheap as you, if you look at other systems our size, close to our size. And one of the things we want to look at is try to shift some of the cost over into a fixed cost to where it's not 
uh, dependent upon weather, hot, dry weathers and stuff like that and try to get it to more stable rate structure. Uh, and if you look at what other systems have done, they've sort of been doing that and shifting their cost over same way. Uh, sewer sales a little different. It sort of has a declining uh, trend also, except for you've got a couple of the last two years have went up. That's attributed to one wholesale customer. And I don't foresee that going forward because I think they've got an issue they need to fix. And if they fix that, it will come right back down. So uh, we also want to look at, uh, there's been some discussion about sewer availability charge. If you have sewer in front of your property, and whether the city wants to charge or not, what that charge should be. If you have a minimum charge, what's the, what's the value of that being in front of your house, but not paying a commodity charge. So uh, we want to update our, sort of look at and have a second set of eyes on our wholesale rates. So all of those things is what we're going to hope to accomplish in this study. Uh, can you go back to that one about <coughs> water usage kind of going down, but you're, is it mostly due to the leaks uh, being fixed or, or what? Uh, why? It seems we're growing. We've got a lot of construction and housing and apartments. It, the trend, it be going up. well, a, tr a trend across the country is water saving devices people replacing toilets, everything's okay. uh, water saving now, you know, showers, you, you know, put a new shower head in, you either. Hold on one second. Is there okay. a motion? Yes. <laughs> so moved. Second. Motion second. Okay. okay. Go ahead. That wa water, uh, water saving devices, people more aware of con conservation, you know, uh, plus the utility district, 50% of our water is sold to wholesale customers. They have made a better effort in trying to get their unaccounted for water under control. So that's had an uh, impact also. Any other comments? No. All vote. Three yes votes. Motion. Thank you. Please. Thank you. 7C, consider authorizing the city manager to execute an engineering agreement for engineering services relative to the South Jefferson Avenue widening project with the TDOT. Tony Peak. Mayor and Council, we have uh, negotiated an engineering services contract uh, for the uh, utility relocation on South Jefferson Avenue. Uh, and uh, we have chosen Grisham Smith and Partners as our engineering firm. And you can see the cost uh, pre-construction at $80,500. Limited inspection services of 9,800 for a total not to exceed of $90,300. And we anticipate getting somewhere above 70% reimbursement for the, from the state for those services. And this will allow us to meet the TDOT time frame to get it into the TDOT contract when that's done. Mr. Rader has reviewed the agreement and uh, recommends your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Three yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you, 7D. Hold a public hearing on the annual progress report on the plans of services for the following annexation areas. Old Bridge Road, Falling Water River area, Buck Mountain Road, Dry Valley Road, East Highway 70 North, Interstate 40 area, West Cookville Interstate 40, Shagrag Road area, Rebecca Place Bunker Hill Road area, Bunker Hill Road, Love Lady Road, Free Hill Road, North Washington area, South Willow Avenue, Bennett Road Extension Area, Old Stewart Road Area, and Hall Bennett Road Area. Mr. Mills. Mayor and Council Members, it's that exciting time of year again that we'll go over our report. Um, since 1998, we've been required to do this annual report on the implementation of our plan of services. Um, since that time, we've annexed 21 areas requiring such reports. Um, <clears throat> we've uh, fully implemented the implementation of the, the installation and provision of services in nine of those areas. So we have 12 areas that remain for which we have to do these reports. They're depicted on the screen. The first is the Old Bridge Road, Falling Water River area. The only service remaining there to be provided is sewer service. A sewer line extension project was completed in 2015 um, that served 111 parcels. And sewer service is, is to be extended to nine additional <coughs> parcels uh, in 2018. The Buck Mountain Road, Dry Valley Road, again, it's the only sewer that remains. Um, the plan of services specifies it will be provided the same as it is uh, in other unserved areas of the city. The East Highway 70 Interstate 40 area, all services have been provided except sewer. 
Uh, we've had two phases of sewer installation completed since we've annexed that area, serving 165 parcels. The West Cookville, which is this large area here, uh, Interstate 40 area, we do have some water service improvements to be completed, sanitary sewer, some street lighting, and some electrical service. Uh, most of the street lighting and electrical service um, improvements will be completed once the uh, Tennessee Avenue uh, I-40 interchange project is completed. Um, in terms of water service, some of these areas remain served by a utility district. A verbal agreement with Double Springs Utility District for acquisition of their service area north of I-40 was reached in 2016. However, it still remains being served by Double Springs Utility District. Um, the area south of I-40, which was served by Cookville Boat Dock, um, that area has been acquired and is now served by the city of Cookville. The Shag Rag Rug area, which is the north part here of town, all service have been provided except sewer. Uh, the plan of service specifies that it will be provided based on the same criteria we use to determine the extension of sewer and other unserved portions of the city. The Rebecca Place, Bunker Hill Road area, the only thing that remains there is sewer. Um, the plan of service specifies it has to be provided within 20 years after annexation. Um, we provided sewer to two customers in this area. The Bunker Hill Road, uh, Love Lady Road, which is contiguous with the uh, Rebecca Place, Bunker Hill Road annexation, um, the only service remaining to be provided is sewer. The plan of services specifies it has to be provided within 20 years after the effective date of annexation. The Free Hill Road area, which is uh, north of town here, um, the only thing that remains there is again sewer. The plan of services specifies it has to be provided within 25 years. The South Willow Avenue area, um, the only thing that remains there again is sewer. Um, we have extended sewer to 13 parcels in this area. The Bennett Road Extension Area, uh, all services have been provided except water service and sanitary sewer. Um, it's, it's the same situation as the West Cookville is we do have an agreement with Double Springs Water Utility District, uh, which was completed in 2016, but the area remains to be remains uh, under the uh, service of Double Springs. Plan of services specifies that sewer will be provided based upon the same criteria that's used in the other unserved portions of the city. A sewer line was extended under I-40, which um, was required to provide service north of Interstate uh, in, in 2016. The Old Stewart Road area, all services except for sewer and street lights has been provided. Um, <clears throat> the, as part of the I-40 interchange project, a sewer line was installed, installed along Tennessee Avenue serving five parcels, which also eliminated a sewer pump station that previously served uh, Academy Sports. And the electric department's working with Upper Cumberland Electric um, to complete the installation of street lighting, which is expected to be uh, during this year. And lastly, the Hall Bennett Road area, all services are provided except for sewer and street lights, and this is real similar to the old Stewart Road. Uh, plans, the sewer will be provided when uh, the, is based upon the same criteria we use to determine the extensions of uh, current unserved areas. And, and the same as the old Stewart, the electric department is working with Upper Cumberland Electric for the completion of installation of street lighting which is expected to be during this year. Well, that concludes, concludes the report. Thank you. Uh, do we have any citizens that would like to address the council about any of these items? Is the public here? I live in the East Highway 70. We were annexed in 2000. I don't have sewer yet. I, what is the plan of services for that area? The plan of service for that area specifies will be extended based upon the same criteria that we use to determine uh, unserved portions of the current city limits. So that's uh, up to the uh, water department and the council to determine when that will be done. And I think the council depends upon the recommendation of the water department. So Mr. Kelly might be able to address that. Sir, what's your name and your address? Uh, John Keith, and my address is 1636 Iris Avenue. Okay. Uh, Thank when you. Iris. Iris Avenue. I know we placed sewer down 70 in front of. Right. Uh, it's on Linda Avenue. It's on the one below us. Okay. I think they have sewer, we, but we don't. You want us to get back with him or you want Ronnie to address it? Yeah, but you get his name and get, we'll get We've got it. We'll make sure Ronnie Kelly uh, and his department looks at that and gets in contact with you, okay? All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. I, I have it up here and I'll make sure they have it. Yes. Anyone else? All right. That'll close the public hearing portion. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, motion to accept the report. Yeah, motion to accept the report. Second. Second. 
Second. All right. All in favor? Three yes votes. Motion Very carries. good. That concludes our agenda portion. Do we have anyone that would like to address the council on non-agenda items tonight? No? All right. Council, anybody? No? Very good. We are adjourned.